Want to know what it's like to be homeless? It's lonely, cold and hopeless. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm surrounded by crackheads, drunks and roamers. It's not like I want to be involved, but it's a road I found myself on. Like many people on this road, their lives are so complex and built around stress, it's probably the reason we're all in this mess. See, we can't even sleep at night, and we don't even control the lights. And when it's windy and blistering cold and the darkest of November's nights, your only wish is to feel warm inside. A luxury we all miss, like a sweet kiss. I split with my wife, so I lived on the barge. My barge caught fire. I lost everything. I ended up with what I was wearing and 26 pounds in my pocket. So the key worker told me I would be on the streets for six months. After that six months, the council could still take two to three years to house me. Well, up until recently, Bristol only ever admitted to seven homeless people. Now they've brought it up to 97, nowhere near close, 196 in Bristol, lost sleepers, and it's probably gone over the 200 mark now. I was a bus and coach driver, but I did that through an agency, so my work was sporadic. I couldn't afford to live in London, so I decided to come down to Bristol and join the same agency there, but they said to me they couldn't help me until I'd had the Bristol address. So that meant no work and no address. And I couldn't get either without the other. The toilets for me would be half an hour down that way to Gordano services. As to getting wet, I try not to, but if I do, I stay in the tent and in my sleeping bag and just basically let them dry me out. We've been homeless for seven and a half months in the town centre to start with but I was very anxious of night time and I couldn't really sleep always slept the one I opened we were in a little two-man tent to start with and then uh, somebody donated this tent it certainly beats shop doorways there's no government aid if it wasn't for the general public we'd be knackered I take my bags everywhere I have to, I've got nowhere to put it, you know, if I find a job I actually have to take all of my luggage to my job with me, which isn't viable, I can't do that You know, as well as that I've got to carry my dirty stuff with my clean stuff Find someone to wash it, dry it, put it all back into the same place It's really tiring My feet look crazy right now, you know, they're tired from months of walking Not wearing proper shoes but I can't help that, I can't afford shoes. My parents told me, ignore homeless people on the streets because they obviously decline the help. But I could never really accept that. And now seeing it firsthand and meeting other people, all different age groups, ethnicities, genders, everyone's having the same problem. Like every, nobody has any other options. We're, we're handing over our fate and someone else is in control of our lives. Basically, it's a problem around Manchester, uh, homeless, and all of us are local. But if you haven't got a local connection, you won't house you. You're not a priority. They give you shelters, but we only give you shelters for so long, and then they kick you out again, so you're back home homeless again. It's just getting worse, it's never getting better. I've been living like this for a year, and I'm sick of it. I want off the street. It's my own fault because I walked out of my job, but, but I walked out because I couldn't cope anymore. I don't take drugs, I don't do whatever, I, I read books. On average I read about three novels a week. It's an escape from the reality of what I'm living in, man. People ask me, what, how am I? I tell them I'm living the dream. I just don't know whose dream I'm living. It ain't mine. But I just get on with it. It's a waiting game. That's all it is. <laughs>